What is happening people? Just about to get into today's session. Just in the car park now. Just watched the Euros quarterfinals so you can see how far behind I am on content. It is about 9 p.m. A few things I want to be doing in today's session uh, that I'm mindful of going into it are I want to overfold when opponents bet into my uncapped range. I want to not bluff versus my opponent's uncapped ranges. I want to avoid slow playing completely. And one more thing, I want to pay more attention to my opponents when I'm not in hands. You get so much time in live poker to gain information if you pay attention to opponents' tendencies by seeing what the showdown of their hands are and how they played it. And hopefully we run just as well as in the last session and can get even more value. So I'll see you at the tables. About 15 minutes into the session, we raise early position, button and big blind call, we hit an ace on the flop, c-bet, take it down, and start the session on a positive. An uneventful hour goes by before picking up pocket tens on the button. There are three limpers before us, and this is an easy isolation raise. I raised 20, and surprisingly, none of the limpers call, but the big blind does call, and we go heads up to 729 rainbow 47 pounds in the pot the only information i have on this opponent is that he is capable i don't know if he's a recreational or a regular but that being said he checks it to me and i bet small i basically bet my range to charge those over cards and i bet 15 he calls turn is the five of hearts bringing in a flush draw 77 pounds in the pot he checks to me again and i think here i want to bet around half pot or maybe more to charge his over cards to charge his lower pairs his draws maybe a could go larger but i bet 35 and now he raises to 125 i think it over for a while and realized my range is uncapped to have all the over pairs on top of that he probably views me on the tighter side so i think when he raises my uncapped range i should be way more inclined to fold and that is what i do i hold true to what i said before the session overfold when opponents bet into my uncapped range so that's what i do and he ends up telling me but not showing that he had pocket twos so possibly a good fold i think it was a good fold about 10 minutes later we see a free flop with eight six off in a limped pot in the big blind flop comes eight eight six but unfortunately we only win a small one 40 minutes go by and we pick up pocket eight in the cutoff. I raised to seven, the button calls, the small blind now with only 90 pounds behind raises to 25 and the action is back on us. We have a decision to make. I think with the effective stack being 90 pounds and us being out of position to the button, I think the best play here is to go all in or fold. But the small blind was a very tight, passive recreational player who I don't think had free bet the whole whole session so for that reason i do make the fold continuing on the theme of telling you the time between hands 10 minutes later the straddle is on we have ace jack off in the big blind there are three limpers before the action is on us so 22 pounds in the pot we have a hand that doesn't perform too well multi-way so i do opt for the squeeze a three bet a juicy 35 pounds and thankfully we get to take this one down 20 minutes later, we pick up King Queen off in the hijack. There are two limpers before the action is on us. And I raise, I iso raise to 15 and the cutoff calls. So we do go heads up to a flop of 956 rainbow. 37 pounds in the pot. I'm out of position, so I do decide to check. And the cutoff bets 25 into 37. That's quite a large bet. Uh, we have a nice hand, we have two overs, but I think for that price we have to just fold and that's what I do. 10 minutes later we pick up King Queen off again, this time in the big blind with the straddle on and two limpers. It's a similar spot to the ace jack offhand and I make a similar play. I raise to try to take it down here and now and thankfully we do. Our next opportunity to play comes 35 minutes later. You can see how slow live poker is, how patient you need to be. We are in the small blind with ace nine 
off the button limped. I decide to raise the 10. The big blind calls and the button calls. Flop comes, two of hearts, 10 of hearts, king of spades, 30 pounds in the pot. I check out of position three ways and it checks through. Now the turn is the king of clubs, a good card for our range and a card we can rep as well as pocket jacks, pocket queens. So I decide to delay C bet half pot and only the big blind calls. Now the river is the two of clubs, making it a double paired board. This is pretty much a brick. I didn't lead the turn to fold the river. That would be burning money. That would be going back to my old ways. Surprise, motherfucker. So now I do decide to bet big. I bet 55, I make the bluff, and he very quickly folds. I think the logic here was after he checked back flop, he most likely doesn't have a king and is capped. Whereas we, being the pre-flop aggressor, our position on the flop multi-way, we can still check and still be uncapped. So when we fire on the turn and the river, we look pretty strong and can get him off a decent pocket pair or a 10 maybe even. Anyway, we move. We pick up pocket 10s on the button. Under the gun has raised to 10. He's just a recreational player. My read on whether he's tight or loose isn't the best. But then the cutoff free bets to 25. And my read on the cutoff is that he's definitely a tight recreational. He hasn't free bet much this whole session. So this is quite alarming as he could have us in horrible shape with jacks plus or a hand like ace queen or ace king, which we would be flipping with was we to go all in. Therefore, I don't think going all in is a great shout. So instead, I contemplate whether this should be a call. Well, the blinds are passive, which is great, but under the gun is yet to act. He only has a stack of 200 pounds and could easily jam it in our face. I decide to sadly let this one go. And again, not too long after running a little bit hot pre-flop, we get Del Ace King off first to act. I raise it to 10 pounds and now it folds to Cutoff who decides to put in a raise of 25 pounds. It folds back around to us. Now some information on the Cutoff, he is definitely a recreational player. He only has 235 pounds behind and he is not, he is not a very loose aggressive player. So when he raises here, he's definitely got something and we're in a tricky spot out of position with Ace King. I know from previous mistakes in previous vlogs that we want to see all five cards so free betting would mean putting more than one third of the effective stack. So that means we have to go all in. I think he has about 200 behind at the time. So I only put in around 210 pounds more. He does in fact have a little bit more. He puts me all in for about 20 or 10 pounds more. So I match that a call and he shows pocket jacks. Oh, what you say, huh? Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, bro. Cheers, bro. Thanks for teaching me how to play. After that hand, I was very chuffed myself, to be honest. Not just because I got the right result, but because it was a sign of progress. Finally playing Ace King out of position pre-flop correctly by not being afraid to put all my chips into the middle and realize my equity by seeing all five cards. Previously, I would instead just make the call pre-flop. And then when I missed the flop, have to fold when facing a bet and not be able to realize my equity. Ace King, not an easy hand to play, especially as a beginner. But when you accept the swings with it, it does make it easier. Next up, we pick up the TNTs for the third time in the session. Go heads up with the big blind as the early position pre-flop raiser. Board comes ace high with some low cards, a range bet and he folds. I decide that's enough poker for today after making almost a 50% return on investment. So finally, I found the shove with ace king pre-flop when I'm supposed to do it. Come on, that is progress I think, so. Really happy with that. That was the main hand of the session. Made a bluff. I'm not too sure if the line was great, but it worked out. And a good session. For transparency, we then go on to play an unexciting eight hour poker session. I made a net loss of 125 pounds, definitely partly due to some mistakes, but also due to being card dead. So let's just move on to the final session, which as you can guess by the thumbnail title, is a special one to say the least. 
we play our first hand at 8.42 p.m. Checking out of the big blind with 6.5 off, flopping trips and turning a full house, we take it down to kick off the session with a £20 profit. Moving on to pocket jacks in the small blind. There is a limper from middle position and then a cutoff raise to seven, which is not very large. It folds to us and we put in the squeeze to a juicy 30 pounds and take it down. We then pick up ace king off in early position, raise it to seven pounds and go five ways. We miss the flop, small blind leads out and we are forced to fold. And now we know seven pounds is too small a raise to go heads up on this table, which is at least valuable information Being moving forward. The parade comes to town, going down Broadway. It's a one-way street, whichever way I go. Next up, guys, we face a big decision. The ten pound straddle is on, the hijack has raised to 35, and we have king queen of clubs, only 39 big blinds deep. I think we can call, I think we can raise. I decide to raise this time to 100 pounds, still less than a third of our stack, so it's fine. And we block kings and queens, plus our in position with the chance to isolate our opponent. And that's just what happens. He calls and the flop is ace, three, king, two spades. He checks immediately and turns his head away from the flop, claiming to not have seen it. This board is unreal for us, so I decide to just range bet for one quarter. Not loving the ace, of course. He calls, and my plan is to just see a cheap showdown now. Seven of clubs on the turn. He checks, I check. Jack of hearts on the river. He thinks for a bit now, and then, thankfully, checks. Let's party. I check it right back and he tells me my ace is good we show take it down and we move so far you must be wondering what the fuss is about with the title of this vlog i'm up a decent amount i'm playing improved poker if you ask me and now we have a 550 pound stack and it only gets better when we pick up black kings in the big blind two players limp and then the action player on the button with around 450 pounds behind raises to 15 pounds small blind calls and this is an easy squeeze spot i free bet to 60 quid which is smaller than I would have liked. It falls to the action player who now min raises to 120 pounds. Music to my ears. We hold the second best hand in the game versus the splashiest player on the table. I send happily the rest of my chips into the middle and he quickly calls revealing he has queens. We have him right where we want him. We got you, you son of a bitch. We run it once and guys, I have to break it to you that I accidentally pressed stop on the recording just as I rose up to show the run out of the hand. So we're going to have to skip to the end result. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? After having recently took two to three months off to reflect and work on my game, I thought maybe this will be clean sailing now. The road to Vegas won't have too many twists or turns, but I've already been proven wrong. It's a very unforgiving game and that one hurt. But time to try win some back. We pick up pocket nines on the button, one limper, loose wreck in the hijack raises to 12, cut off calls and I cold call to set mine. Knowing the blinds are passive, we go four ways. Flop comes queen eight, two of clubs. And it's not meant to be, especially after loose rec leads out and cut off calls, we make an easy fold onto the next hand. I open queen 10 of clubs in middle position to 10 pounds, cut off calls, small blind calls, flop comes king, jack, jack, rainbow. I range bet 10 pounds, only the cut off calls. Turn is the seven of hearts. Our opponent is a tight wreck who I feel has a very strong continuing range on the flop, so I think we could bet small, but I decided to just check, and now he bets just a tenner. We call for that price, a river is another king. We check fold to his bet, he does indeed show a king, we move. 
We then see a free flop out of the big blind with ace, eight off, flop in two pair, make 20 quid. We cold call set mine, pocket freeze out of the hijack, go four ways to an unbelievable ace, ace, free flop. Checks to me, I check, and it unfortunately checks through. And the turn is a six of hearts, bringing in a flush draw. So when it checks to me again, I think now I have to try build a pot. Any flush draw will probably call. Any ace might raise. Any pocket pair might call. I bet ten pounds, but everyone folds. Damn. Next up, open pocket tens, first to act, button calls, and now the big blind, who has been cold calling in middle position all night, decides to put in the free bet to 42. I think it over for a while and come to the conclusion that the range of this player type is crushing me. And make the fold. He did indeed have kings. It's been a bit of a bitter session so far, but we've stayed in the fight, tried to get our chips back, remained patient, and now we've been rewarded with pocket kings on the button. Let's go. A tight recreational raises from hijack, cutoff calls, and once again, we have an easy squeeze spot. I go 40, would prefer 50. Now the tight wreck, min clicks to 87. I think out of position, I might just jam, but we are in position. I decide to just cool. call. Although I am quite concerned because he hasn't full bet all evening. Flop comes very nice though. 864 rainbow. He bets 150. And now it's very clear to me he does not have ace king. I don't think I can do anything but call. It is a jack of hearts on the turn. He now goes all in for our remaining 128 pounds. With SBR being so low, of course, I make the call and hope he shows queens. But instead, it is aces. Damn, nothing to do but move on, guys. Question is, could I have folded pre to this player type? I knew he was tight, but maybe I didn't give him enough credit for how tight he really was. And it could be one of those rare times you find a fold with kings pre. Anyway, usually I'd say it's time to rack up my chips, but I don't have any. Time to go home. Well, that was the worst session of my life. Let me get out of the road. I'm walking out with a 660 pound loss. Just got super unlucky with the runouts today and uh, obviously aces versus kings you know what against that player type there could even be argument for folding preflop which sounds ridiculous but yeah i mean you learn something new every single session and uh i think that is one of them that kings is you can fold it it is a hand you can fold it pre if you feel like they have aces yeah, but I'll be back. I'll be back stronger and uh, hopefully we can just run better. It really, really unfortunate today. Uh, we could have made some decent progress towards Vegas uh, for the bankroll challenge, but it swung the other way. Happens to the best of us. And I uh, hope you're finding some value in this series. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the content. And uh, guys, as always, thanks for watching. And I'm out. Peace.